The people trying to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been hit by setback after setback. They've battled leaks of radioactive water and faced accusations of misconduct. It's lost them a lot of public trust, and now they're trying to win it back. The operator, TEPCO, has created a company dedicated to the decommissioning. The man who has to navigate those challenges spoke to our correspondent, Yoichiro Tateiwa, and he revealed that he's not sure if he can comply with the government's set plan. Naohiro Masuda is in charge of the entire decommissioning process at Fukushima Daiichi. He brings valuable experience to the job. He has worked as a nuclear engineer for decades. Masuda says radiation in some areas of the crippled reactor buildings is still so high that workers can only stay there for a few minutes. The hardest part of decommissioning the plant will be removing the fuel that's cooled and turned into highly radioactive debris. We have no idea about the debris. We don't know its shape or strength. We have to remove it remotely, from 30 meters above. But we don't have that kind of technology yet. It simply doesn't exist. Experts say workers will have to keep the debris submerged in water to prevent radiation from being released. But Masuda says that's not as easy as it sounds. We still don't know whether it's possible to fill the reactor containers with water. We've found some cracks and holes in the three damaged container vessels but we don't know if we've found them all. If it turns out there are other holes, we might have to look for some other way to remove the debris. The government wants that work to begin in 2020. I asked Masuda how confident he is that he can hit that target, and his answer was surprisingly candid. It's a very big challenge. Honestly speaking, I cannot say it's possible, but I also do not wish to say it's impossible. I also asked Masuda what he needs most for the operation to succeed. That is hard to say, but probably experience. How much radiation exposure can people tolerate? What kind of information do residents in the area need? There is no textbook to teach us what to do. I have to make decisions every step of the way. And I must be honest with you. I cannot promise that I will always make the right decision. Masuda says he wants the help of experts in a variety of fields from all over the world. He says he wants to make every effort to carry out the decades of work efficiently and safely. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. Nuclear react, uh, regulators have begun examining a power plant in southwestern Japan to see if it can return online under new regulations introduced after 2011 Fukushima accidents. Officials with the Nuclear Regulation Authority started inspections of facilities at the number one reactor of the Sendai plant on Monday. Two reactors at the plant became the first to clear the new tougher regulations last year. Currently all commercial reactors in the country are offline. The officials will check whether facilities and equipment installed to improve safety will function properly. The regulators are focusing on about 500 of the new items that are designed to withstand a severe nuclear accident. We plan to not only check the facility's technical standards, but also ensure the operator's quality management. 
The plant's operator, Kyushu Electric Power, plans to start loading nuclear fuel into the reactor in June for a restart in early July. The 2011 accident at the Fukushima nuclear plant prompted Japan to look more carefully at where its electricity came from. Japanese government officials are trying to figure out what mix of energy sources will meet the country's power needs. One group of business leaders is proposing that nuclear power remain one of the major sources of the nation's total energy supply in the coming years. Officials with the Japan Association of Corporate Executives say nuclear energy power will be needed as a baseload energy source. They say Japan's reliance on it will probably need to be at least 20% of all of its power in 2030. The country derived 28% of its electricity from nuclear power before the 2011 accident. All of Japan's nuclear power plants are currently offline. The association members say it's unlikely that renewable energy sources such as solar and wind will provide more than 30% of Japan's energy mix in 2030. More business people in Japan have looked to natural gas as a stable energy source since the nuclear crisis in 2011. Tokyo Gas and trading firm Sumitomo Corporation have tied up with a U.S. energy company to work on a facility to produce liquefied natural gas. Workers have started building a plant in the U.S. state of Maryland to export LNG to Japan. Japanese and U.S. company officials attended the groundbreaking ceremony. The plant will likely cost more than $3.3 billion. The aim is to export 2.3 million tons of gas a year, starting from the end of 2017. Tokyo Gas and Kansai Electric Power Company will buy LNG produced at the plant. Japan will increasingly rely on liquefied natural gas. Most of it now comes from the Middle East. This project means that Japan will be able to secure a stable supply from the United States. Toshiba and Osaka Gas are involved in an LNG plant in Texas. Mitsubishi Corporation and Mitsui and Company are working on a similar project in Louisiana. Japanese experts have come up with new measures to better prepare for volcanic eruptions. A government working group released its report one day before the six-month anniversary of the eruption of Mount Ontake in central Japan. The head of the group urged Disaster Management Minister Eriko Yamatani to consider recommendations for improvements in relevant sectors. We need to carry out the measures in an organized way on an ongoing basis. Dozens of climbers were killed by the sudden eruption of Mount Ontake. It was the deadliest volcanic disaster in decades. The report urges the Japan Meteorological Agency to is issue provisional information about any change in the seismic activity of a volcano, even if the change is too minor to raise the alert level or issue a warning. Japanese whaling ships have returned to port after completing a trip to the Antarctic Ocean. The voyage was unusual in that it did not involve catching any whales. That's because the International Court of Justice ordered Japan to halt its research whaling program last March. The two ships docked at a port in Yamaguchi Prefecture, western Japan, on Saturday. Researchers on the expedition focused on observing whales and conducting population surveys. They also took skin samples. We hope the scientific data gathered by the expedition will lead to the resumption of commercial whaling. Hayashi said officials have submitted a proposal for a new research program to the International Whaling Commission. It would significantly reduce the number of whales caught. Officials hope they'll be able to resume the research trips in the Antarctic next season. But anti-whaling countries are expected to protest the plan. It's not that story for Fujifilm Holdings executives there said they'll buy a U.S. biotech firm to strengthen their medical business. 
The executives plan to buy Cellular Dynamics International for $307 million. They say they'll acquire all of the shares by the end of April. People at the U.S. firm develop IPS cells, which can grow into all kinds of human body tissues. They make products with those cells and provide them to drug companies and research institutions for use in treatments and new medicines. Fujifilm hopes to play a leading role in the regenerative medicine business. Komori says IPS cell technology in Japan is evolving fast, and he says the field offers big potential for regenerative medicines and drug development. Negotiators are hoping to reach an agreement on Iran's nuclear development before a March 31st deadline. Five permanent members of the UN Security Council plus Germany have been holding talks since Thursday with Iran. British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond spoke to reporters before the meeting about the difficulties in resolving the outstanding issues. Iran has got to take a deep breath and make some tough decisions to ensure that those red lines can be met. I very much hope that we will uh, have success over the coming hours. The talks are focused on narrowing differences on how to lift sanctions imposed on Iran. Both sides are urging each other to compromise.